kids behind me are so excited because they've just received their boxes. Have you ever thought what comes after the box? At Samaritan's Purse, we've got an incredible program after Operation Christmas Child. It's called The Greatest Journey. The purpose of Samaritan's Purse is evangelism. We just don't want to just hand out a box. Children that put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we want them to grow in their faith. We want to disciple them and raise up an army of young kids who can take their faith and share it with another child so that that person will put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. This is what it's all about, evangelism, taking the gospel to another generation. You shall love the Lord your God. Do you know that you're passing on what you've learned to another person, not just keeping the knowledge for yourself. You feel love. You feel like, you know what, I'm at home. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do right now. We always work through the local church. And when it's all said and done and the training's finished, these kids are going to be part of the church, going out into their communities, sharing their faith in Jesus Christ. The Greatest Journey is a great opportunity to impact the life of a child, teaching children how to share their faith with their friends and family around the world, raising up an army of evangelists who can take the gospel to the next generation. Good morning. Our homeland, so beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved and mercy more than life. Staying united as a nation does not come without triumph, it does not come without tragedy. America has endured wars, both foreign and domestic. This land remains home of the free because it remains the home of the brave. Throughout our history, men and women have answered the call, the nation's call, to protect and defend those rights and freedoms we hold sacred. Some walk among us in battlefield dress, ready to board the next flight to stand in our stead, harm's way. Some walk among us unnoticed, but they carry the satisfaction of memories of victories won and the scars of friends lost. Some are not able to walk among us for they bear the horrendous wounds of battle. And some are not able to walk among us for they are fallen patriots who live on in the heart of a grateful nation. Our debt cannot be adequately paid, but our chance to honor our heroes cannot happen often enough. And now, as a song from your branch of the service is sung, would all our active military and veterans please rise so we may thank you for protecting our homeland. Over hill, over dale, we will hit the dusty trail, and those case logs go rolling along. Sing with us, sing with us, hear them shout, tell them marching all about, and those case logs go rolling along. Lord, I
Thank each, each one who may be actively serving or who has served. And uh, as we remember our veterans today, those who are uh, made it home from the battlefield and those who did not as well. And even those who are still missing in action uh, as our government continues to search for those who have uh, not been able to uh, make it back home yet. So I do appreciate and thank each of you for your service and uh, those of others. There's many in my family that have served as well. Uh, and so I am. I'm, I'm grateful for uh, for for those of you who have who have served. And so thank you very much. Um, kind of a public service message for you. If you like an early Easter hunt, but with different kinds of items. If you'll look behind the bales of wheat, you may find a surprise back there called pecans. And if you would like those, help yourself as you make your way out the back. I have been told not to tell you who, who, who put those back there, but they are there. Uh, and so if you would like some, don't fight each other to the back door, please. Let's be civil as we go into the back and do that. But, they are wel- but you're welcome to uh, uh, take those um, as you look behind those bales of straw today. Um, and also, I know today is our in gathering. We have 115 boxes, uh, but uh, Pam said she would give it till Wednesday. We need 10 boxes to, to meet our goal. If you would like to be one of those 10 people maybe to do one extra box, um, then uh, feel free to take one with you as you go uh, so that we might be able to, uh, uh, to meet our, our goal. Uh, and next Sunday evening, uh, we will be having the uh, community Thanksgiving service here uh, at our church. It starts at 6 o'clock. Uh, and so we hope that you will join us for that service and then for dessert fellowship uh, following that time uh, together. Uh, there will be no Wednesday night activities uh, um, uh, next, we- next th- Wednesday. Uh, and the office will be closed the 24th and 25th. And on Thanksgiving Day, uh, I know we have been asked as a church to contribute uh, to the Zebulon uh, Methodist Church's um, Thanksgiving Day meal. Uh, they serve around 100, 150 people, uh, and so and you can, if you want to help and serve as well, uh, they invite you to come or invite us to come and be a part of that. And uh, and, and also there will be a change today. I know for the past couple of years it's been a maybe it's been a bit a little awkward how we take the offering up. When do you come? When do we don't come? When do we bring it? When we whatever. If you haven't given, just remain seated. We're going to try to go back to normal. We're going to have Ushers, they will come forward and they will, they will come to you uh, and you can put your uh, offering in if you have not already done that. So we'll do that from, from this point forward until we can't, until we have, hopefully we won't have to stop again. But we will do that uh, today and starting uh, and, and continue on as well. Um, and so I think, Fred, you have an announcement as well. If you do not have plans this evening, there is a church celebration, a gathering of different churches that are hosting a Thanksgiving concert this evening at Hepzibah. It's at 6 p.m., so if you'd like to come and enjoy the time of fellowship with other believers, this would be a great time to get together in Thanksgiving. Let me ask you to stand and join in singing House of the Lord. Quiet. 
shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. My God is surely in this place, and we won't be tired. We shout out your praise.
something that is an act of worship. We give up what we don't want to give up. We give to you that which is the measure of, of our appreciation for what you have done for us. For what we do today, we pray that it will be blessed by you and used according to your will and not according to human desire. I pray this in the holy name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, we come to the cross. Father, we lay our lives in your hands for the mercy that you have bestowed on us here and for the gates that have been opened for all those who have confessed their sin. 
all those that have turned to you, have been saved, and have been baptized and grown in faith by your love into your eternal life. And God, for this we are thankful. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want to have fun with you this morning, and we're going to have a couple of little things that uh, I want you to do. I wish I had planned a little bit better because I would have had all the stuff from back in the children's area as far as musical instruments are concerned, and I would have passed them out to you because we are reading a psalm today that is one of my favorite, and my first encounter with that psalm was when I was, uh, I think, a preschooler, maybe four or five years old. And you remember those buckets that used to be in Vacation Bible School in the children's area, and then one bucket would be these little sandpaper things that you would rub together to make a noise. And then there was a gourd that had ridges on it, and you take a stick and rub it back and forth. It sounded like a cricket. And then they had the one that you could spin around. It was made out of metal, and it sounded like a thousand crickets. You remember those? You remember the bongos? You remember the, the triangle? I never wanted the triangle. It just didn't make enough noise. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah, that, I'm getting to that. There was the bongos. We had, uh, let's see, those little finger symbols. You remember those? Like the little monkey used to, to do. And uh, let's see, there was something else. What? Yeah, there was uh, the symbols. Now, when she pulled all of that out, this one wanted the symbols. I wanted the big two symbols. They were maybe not quite that big, but they had a handle on either end, and you could crash them together, and it was such a beautiful sound. And I was lucky enough that day to get the symbols, and so she taught us this scripture. Just imagine four and five-year-olds marching around the room Crickets, crickets, sandpaper, blocks, drums, bongos, and shh, Can you see me? Okay. Marching around. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. Shh. All ye lands, shh. Serve the Lord with gladness. Bang! And come before his presence with singing. Now, for those of you who can't sing, how many of you are there? Raise your hand. Let's confess right today. You can't, come on, raise them high. You cannot sing. You can't carry a tune in the bucket. This is a psalm for you. Listen to the word of the Lord. Make a joyful noise. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether or not you can sing, but it does matter if you've got a song. And that's what worshipers have. Those who worship the Lord, they do so with gladness. They do so as a service to the Lord. They do so to make it obvious. It becomes noisy. The word there is clamorous. It's noticeable. You can't deny it. It's not a whisper. It's something that's out front and bold people notice it. You know, that's one of the things that is one of the noteworthy items, elements of the Christian church is that it knows how to worship. Today, the cars parked in the parking lot are a testimony to those who go by that there are people in that building, whether I know what they believe or not, they're in there worshiping. Worship is an identifier of the Christian church. 
Now, this Psalm 100 is kind of antiphonal. That means the worship leader would say something and the congregation would respond. For instance, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, and serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And the congregation would respond, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So there was a call to worship, and then there was a a response. Then there was another one. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise, and be thankful unto him, and bless his holy name. And the congregation would respond, For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. In our hymnal in the back of the pew, which we don't use much anymore, that's a real shame, because in the back of it, there are responsive readings that are Scripture. And I could have had you turn to one of those today that deals with Psalm 100, and we could have done it antiphonally and just, well, let's do that right now. Music leader, find us where that responsive reading is for Psalm 100. Let's kind of play for just a minute. Would you like that? Let's worship the Lord with the scripture. Responsive reading what? Sorry to put him, sorry to put him on the spot. I think there's an index in there for responsive reading. Anybody find it? Six, six, nine. What's the name of it? All right, here. Psalm 100. I apologize. Well, better yet, do you have your Bible in front of you? What's that? 673, praise and adoration. Since you found it, would you come and lead us as a worship leader? Wonderful. 673. I told you we were going to have fun this morning. Is that it, 670? That's not it? Psalm 100. That's 96. Well, what good are you? Go sit down. I'm just playing. You stay right here. I'm just playing. <laughs> tell, tell me Psalm 100 is in our responsive reading. It skipped 100? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That's okay. This psalm and other psalms in the entire Psalter, they were the hymn book for the Jewish worship. But there was also a prayer book for Jewish meditation. This psalm, I really believe, is one of the earliest creedal statements of Judaism. Number one, it says, This confession in verse 3, after the worship leader has said, make a joyful noise, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Those of you who have the scripture open or you have it up here, let's read this together. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Leave that up there for just a moment and look at it. The creed was God is the Lord, or the Lord is God. And it almost sounds redundant. If you will look at your text, I don't know if it is in this one, that's incorrect. The word Lord ought to be capitalized. And the reason they capitalized it in English translations was to say that's the most holy name of God, Yahweh. 
the name or the word that God used with Moses at the burning bush, I am that I am. That's what Yahweh means. My Old Testament professor said the right translation should be, I am the ising one. I don't start, I don't end, I always am. So that's the most holy name of God. So the most holy, the most highest, the most powerful God in all of the universe, in fact, who made the universe, is the Lord, is God. A second thing, he is creator of everything. Serve the Lord, excuse me, know ye that the Lord, he is God, it is he that hath made us. This is a call for all of the earth to come together and recognize that God is the creator God and we're all created by him. There's not one individual on the face of the earth that hasn't been created by God. It's all set up to work according to God's economy, if they would so choose. Not only is he the Lord, Yahweh, our God, he is our creator, but third, we are his people. Notice the progression. God, universal God, a creator God, comes down to our level. He accuses us as his people, and then he's going to provide. God is good in this way. Not only are we the people, his people, but we are also the sheep of his pasture. I don't know what that does for you, but this passage certainly reminds me of walking around a little Sunday school room at First Baptist Church, Charlotte, banging on some cymbals. But that verse has always stuck with me. I remember it when I was driving on Highway 221 from Clemson to Boone, North Carolina, there was somebody that was going to Appalachian State University that I was in love with. He sits right back there. I was driving up 221, was in through the mountains, left early that morning, and as the sun was coming up, I, I crested the, it was in the fog, I, I, almost you had to drive with your door open looking at the Anybody done that before where you look at the line on the road? I crested the mountain on the ridge, broke out of the fog, and there just happened to be a place where I could just pull off just a little bit, and I was astounded, astounded by what I saw. It was just a vast sea of clouds, almost as smooth as you could imagine. But there were just a few peaks that would stick up, just as clear as a bell. I thought I was in heaven. It's the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. It was one of those moments where I worshipped. Didn't have music. I didn't have somebody telling me what to say. It was just a moment where I knew God. I celebrated his creation. You see, you're sitting there right now not thinking about you need to take another breath. You're sitting there right now and the systems in your body are working whether you know it or not or whether you want them to or not. Things are right now being healed in your body that you are not even aware of. Operations are taking place inside of you that you have nothing to do with. And God has put that kind of thing in order. When I saw the moon shot in 1969, I worshipped God then because I knew that they could not have done that. They could have not figured out the math if God had not put the universe in order. See, there's ways that you can know God and celebrate God and actually see him. Listen to Isaiah chapter 6. Listen to this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. 
and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he did fly. And he cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Yahweh of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a person of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a a people of unclean lips. But mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. You see God here? Do you see him? This place isn't being filled with smoke, but do you see him? How do you see him? Well, one way that I would see him is you are looking at people from the back. So just look toward the front. Look at the congregation and identify people that you know God has worked in their lives or how God has comforted them or a healing that had taken place. You're seeing God. Look at this preacher. You're not seeing God in me, but you know that because of the calling that God has placed on my life that you can see God's working as any other minister that moves about this congregation doing what they do, you see God. You see the holiness of the calling that's placed upon their lives. And I pray that that should move you to understand that God is at work. For those of you who have children, look into their face. Look into their face. I never will forget holding my son. I was able to go into the operating room, the delivery room. We were doing Lamaze, so I had to go in there and coach, you know. My daughter was born earlier, so I wasn't allowed to go in there. I just had to sweat it out, not thinking about what my wife was going through. But I have a real appreciation for the whole created order now to watch that take place. And when he came out and I held him, and he was covered in blood and mucus. I didn't see the blood and the mucus. I only saw a life. And I looked at his face. And I saw the face of God. My wife and I were ministering to a couple at Duke Medical Center. And they knew that they were going to be losing the child. The child would probably last about an hour, they thought. That was the direction from the doctor. Never will forget it. And we agonized with the family as they, she carried all the way through, knowing that this was going to be the culmination. And they cleared out a room and put two rocking chairs in it, and both of them could sit there and hold the child right after it was born. And they asked me, would you like to hold her? And I did. I told my wife this, excuse me, that child opened her eyes and looked at me. Now they say they don't have any vision, they don't have the ability to focus or anything, but I didn't believe it that day because that child looked at me and I saw the face of God. And he said to me, keep going, don't give up. It was a tough time in the life of my ministry, and I was really ready to hang it up. I was really ready to just call it quits and go off and sell insurance or do something else because I was tired of messing with the people who just didn't want to do anything. All they wanted to do is to sit in the pew and absolutely complain about everything that came along in the life of the church. It was the most horrible time of my life, but yet God, so it was to be. 
don't quit, don't give up. Where do you see God? Walk out here and look at that elm tree that's sitting right out there. You didn't make that. The clouds that are moving, the hurricanes that come, the wind that blows, even Jesus saw it. He said to, he said to Nicodemus, look, at the, the, you don't know where the wind is going. You just see the results of it. That's the way the Holy Spirit is. This is the kind of God we worship. We worship this kind of God. We don't worship our praise. This is what's happening in churches today. They worship their worship. They worship their praise. They celebrate what they're doing together in song and in instruments. That's only the experience expression, the expression of what is already known. It's not a time of entertainment. It's not a time of performers giving some kind of music to kind of move you to worship. <laughs> That's true. Music, this noise that we make, is an expression of what's inside of us. Just like Isaiah. I saw the Lord high. And lift it up. Look at these words up here. His love endures forever. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praises. But yet with a tremendous message. So we see God in the message. The music that comes out of our voices. Engaging with one another. Investing in one another. That's the movement of God in our lives. And we see him through what people say to us. And that undones us, as Isaiah would say. I am absolutely unable to speak. I am just enthralled by this moment. I am undone. When we reach that point, when God speaks, who's going to speak for us? Who's going to go? Here am I. Send me. If the Lord Yahweh is God, that means we do not have unlimited power. I laugh at the nations that have summits about climate change. We can do things to help the environment, but we're not going to change the weather. Come to North Carolina, you can get four seasons in one week. It is what it is. It's God creation. It's his order. To think that we in our scientific minds can alter it. If Yahweh is God, that doesn't mean that we have unlimited power. In fact, it means we have to depend upon him. Those of you who are walking through life thinking that you can make it on your own, you cannot. If God is your God, you have to depend upon him. If he is your creator, that means you are not able to change the situation. You have to trust him. His creative grace to work in you through the power of the Holy Spirit if you believe in Christ Jesus. So therefore there's this consistent need to seek him as creator. If you are his person, if we are his people, then that means that God then has chosen to be our shepherd and we have to surrender to be his sheep. And we ought to enjoy being sheep. We create the problem when we demand to be shepherds. We should celebrate God's care. We should celebrate God's creativity and believe him to produce good 
in every way. It's okay. I see God there. Do you? That's a young life is being cared for by parents. And they get embarrassed when the child gets upset and moves or whatever. But that's okay. That's a part of life. That's God at work. And if you think children are fidgeting and youth don't hear what's being said because they're not seeming in your eyes paying attention, I tell you, they're getting it. They're hearing the word. They're seeing the passion. They're seeing worshipers. They're seeing God at work in the lives of people which they deserve. I guess I'm done. I could talk on and on about all the good things that are in this text. Could we put it up on the screen, please? Psalm 100. And I'd like for us to stand and read it together, to say it together. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us. And we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his to his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Alleluia. Amen. Let's sing together. And listen. Listen for the voice of God in the message of the words. May the tune become maybe a harmony that you've never heard before or remember again to call you to know the Lord, to see him. Let's sing together. Jesus, keep me near the cross, bear a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain, in the cross, in the
My counsel and challenge for you today is find a pair of cymbals, a bongo, or something that you can make a joyful noise to the Lord. You know I'm playing, but you know what I mean. Don't hide it. Don't hide it. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me before people, then I will be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. When will Christians ever learn the, the rule that to really have abundant life, it's got to be shared? you got to make it known. You don't put it out there in front of people and make them bow down to what you're saying. You just live life, and you enjoy it, and you have a good time. You know because God is your Lord and Savior. And that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, rests in you to give you counsel and direction. What more could we want? One of the best words in the Scripture is the word through. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're in, if you believe in Christ, you will get through it and be better for it. Amen? So find those symbols. Go after it.